Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we're going to look at the release notes of the 2021.11 version. Stick around and we'll start in a couple of seconds. But before we go any further, as always, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for all of your support. And of course, thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by pressing the join button below. Thanks. And now let's get started with today's video. This video has been recorded on the beta version of the Home Assistant 2021.11 and if there are any changes after that unfortunately they will not be included in this video. So let's get started with what's new in 2021.11. According to the release notes, one of the major things that was added to the 2021.11 version or November version is visit devices and services. And this functionality is great if you have devices on your network that also have UI available through the web interface. By clicking on the Visit Device link, you will be forwarded to that device. Unfortunately, in my setup, none of the devices that are on network had this enabled. And unfortunately, because of that, I cannot show you how this will work for my or your setup. Some of the integrations have already enabled this for the devices they are representing. But unfortunately, I still wasn't able to do it for my DSM, Synology Integration or WLED. Second major thing that was added to Home Assistant November version is Entity Categorization. And this I really do love. What's the reason behind this? If you look at the device, device has multiple sensors or attributes. Some of them are main ones, such as this state for the player, which you can change the volume, start, pause it, etc. The other parameters or attributes are related to the configuration, such as crossfade, status light, touch controls. And the third group of the sensors or entities is diagnostics, that can show you, for example, the battery level, the signal quality, etc. So not all the entities are the same. For example, if you are syncing Home Assistant with Google or Amazon Assistants, you don't or need to sync all the entities that each device has. In this case, from this version onwards, you will be only syncing the state or the main attributes of the device. Let's check how this looks in my setup. This Zigbee IKEA light that's working through the Zigbee 2 MQTT has only controls such as on-off button available through the controls and all the other items are in the sensors. There is one disabled entity which you can enable if you need and this is bar light power on behavior. But I'm not enabling this here, since I control this to the Zigbee to MQTT integration. And here I also have one disabled entity, bar light last seen, which is something that was fixed in the latest version of the Zigbee to MQTT. For some of the devices, unfortunately, this doesn't work. So this Shelly gas sensor looks like this. When it is fixed, and more devices will be fixed, sorted out, and will look better during the following weeks. If we check the WLED, you can see once again we have controls, configuration and diagnostics. Diagnostics is estimate of the current uh, power use, free memory uptime, etc. For the configuration we can select intensity, is this night light, speed, sync, receive, send. And in controls we have on and off button plus playlist and presets if you have them in your configuration. This really helps as only this part of the device entities will be synced as I mentioned with the Google and it can potentially help you to streamline your setup. And for the last example, let's look at network UPS tools. We have sensors, we have configuration and we have diagnostics. If you are like me, then you maybe also want to spread those entities around different tabs in the Lovelace UI and this will definitely help you with that. Icon picker in the UI. This is really great addition to Home Assistant. Previously, whenever I wanted to change the icon or find the icon, I would go to Material Design Icons website and do it there. Now we can do it from within the Home Assistant. Let's say if we want to create a new helper, toggle, called 
subscribed. And we need an icon for that. You can now select it from the drop down list. You can start typing. Select it, press create, and you're done. Thanks for this, what looks like simple integration that will really help us a lot. One of the biggest changes to the current integration is Tuya update in this version of Home Assistant. And we have to thank the Frank for that. Frank, once again, thanks. If you follow Frank on Twitter, you've probably seen what Frank did. And he came and conquered the Tuya devices. Except for lock and remote. Most of devices that had either unfinished or non-working or non-existent integrations or device integrations are now working. And from what I've seen on my Discord server, I know that some devices that didn't work with 2021.10 now work with the .11 version. And once again, thanks a bunch to Frank for all of this work in October. But there are some additional changes or additions to Home Assistant in these versions. Date time today, which is not called date time today, it is called time at. And this will allow you to insert a date, a date and time, or just time, and then match it with the now command. It can help you in your future automations. Also, we have area entities and area devices template functions or filters that can help you trigger or make automations work for specific entities or devices inside an area. Offset has been added to the time trigger. For the end, let's not forget other noteworthy changes. One new integration has been added in this series called Lookin. For seven older integrations, you can now use UI to configure them. But there is also a very long list of breaking changes. Changes for Amazon and Google Assistants. For the recorder databases, Home Assistant has now explicitly defined set of databases or database versions that are supported. And here is the list. Tuya, since there were a lot of changes, you may have some issues. Issues can be, for example, duplicate entities or devices. But also it can be non-existent or not working. So what you can do is any obsolete entity or device related to Tuya, you can just remove it. But please, if you have Tuya, don't forget to read these breaking changes. In the version 20, 21.9, we have received change from snapshot to backups. And now it's time for the old version to go away. If you still haven't, this is how you should rename your services. What was previously snapshot is now backup. Octoprint integration has been added to the UI. So you can now control and add this integration through the UI. But there are also some changes to the sensors. These two sensors have been removed and these two new sensors have been added. In the utility meter, if you have been using offset functionality, it is now limited to 27 days. If you want to use something more than 27 days, what you have to do is you have to migrate this to cron. And as always, there are some integrations that are now gone. Most of those integrations are gone because of the API changes, close API or using web scraping. So if you are using Ascent, Lyft, Nello, Huawei Router or Wink, those integrations are not available in Home Assistant anymore and you can remove them from your configuration YAML file or from the UI. And that's it. By the time you're seeing this video, 2021.11 version should be already out. I have been testing this beta version since it came out, and in the last couple of days or week, I haven't seen any impact on my recording or test system. But before you update your production system, don't forget once again, check a configuration, check the breaking changes list, because there are some automations that you may be using that I'm not using. And if you're satisfied with that, check on the forums, see if there is any big bug that has popped up at the last minute, if not, update your system. I really would like to hear from you what do you think is the best addition to this version of Home Assistant. For me, adding this separation between the control, sensors and configuration is the best thing in this version. Unfortunately, I'm not using Tuya. If I would be using Tuya, then maybe the Tuya addition or Tuya changes would be the one I would prefer the most. And this is it for this Home Assistant how-to with Bearded Thinker. 
If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. But feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Please note, unfortunately, due to the bug in YouTube, some of the comments may go missing as soon as you press submit. So check if your comment is still here by reloading the video. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates, but also to tell YouTube that this video is good and that my content is, well, bearable. This will help with the YouTube algorithms. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.